stars in the sky Umbrella to hide in A dance floor of heaven Do not be afraid Do Consider the stars in the sky When it is darkest They shine out their brightest Consider the stars in the sky in every anguish Oh child, take courage Do not be afraid Do all of this and who holds all of this holds you in his hands Do not be afraid Do not be Consider the stars in the sky Diamond in a ring over the child king Consider the stars in the sky Grace he has promised Coming to find us Do not be afraid Do He who made all of this Says you're worth more than this And holds you in his hands Do not be afraid
Good morning. And welcome to the online and in-person liturgy at St. Matthew's Episcopal Church in Spartanburg, South Carolina for this January 9th, 2022. Our opening hymn is 128. Please stand. to our liturgy this morning. Uh, we are doing a bit of a combination of both the Feast of the Epiphany and the Baptism of our Lord. Well, tell us how it went after the service. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all <coughs> desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenants they have made, and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. been times of suffering in the past, and there is more trial to come, but God will never abandon his people. He will bring peace and redemption to them. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Let us read in unison Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Lord of the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of thunder and thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The effects of discipleship are clearly seen. We must have teachers in the faith, not only to instruct, but to pray us with and for us as we seek to grow into the full stature of Christ. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, They sent Peter and John to them. 
The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel hymn today is page 118. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. For the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, again, good morning. Uh, It is wonderful to see uh, so many people, uh, particularly uh, when when our uh, positive test rate is so high. Um, We are still gathered, uh, many if not most of us masked, but the fact is we are gathered. I was, uh, I was looking through my phone the other day, and, uh, and I noticed something. On Monday, September 27th, 2021, at 3.19 p.m., 3.19 in the afternoon, I was at Costco. Now, I'm pretty sure I was there at that time to get some canned goods for the pantry, But the reason I know I was there at that particular exact time on that particular exact day is because, like I said, I had my phone. And I was looking through photographs. And uh, and I had actually taken a picture when I walked into Costco. A picture of of a display. Ribbons, 
and wrapping paper and ornaments and lighted Christmas trees in September. I took it and I sent it to my family along with a comment on the absurdity of how early Christmas items were being sold September 27th. On Monday, December 27th, I'm not going to tell you they had Halloween stuff out, okay? But on Monday, December 27th, I was actually at the county recycling center near my house. And off to one side was this towering pile of Christmas trees. Stripped of lights and ornaments, removed from homes, tossed in the back of pickup trucks, and now waiting to be ground up as mulch. Christmas began too early, and it ended too soon. Even for those of us who honor the tradition of the 12 days and leave our homes decorated until Epiphany, it's over. It's done. I came by the church yesterday afternoon, and, uh, and if you remember, we had our beautiful Christmas tree right here. You know, adorned with white lights, and uh, it was a chrismon, so all the ornaments were symbols of Christ in, uh, in, uh, in gold and white. And I came by the church yesterday, uh, and it was laying outside the door over here, just laying there waiting to be picked up. It's not, it's not there this morning. Did somebody already take it? Ah, it's a mystery. <laughs> oh, Angela took it. Well, I'm not going there, Angela. <laughs> they are very good. Oh, so it's back there. Very good. Thank you. I was actually going to take it to my hunt club, so, so thank you very much. Uh, I'd be wonder, wondering what the people that tune in from like out of state to our sermons, what in the world is he talking about? Um, <laughs> but in any case... All the trees are down. Christmas is over. The wise men, the, the magi, are now three days out of Bethlehem, headed back to their homes, as the text says, by another road. Which actually brings us back to that story. You know, we didn't gather on Thursday, on the Feast of the Epiphany. But if we had... This is the gospel reading we would have heard. And I think it, it bears listening to because it speaks to this moment. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and we've come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem in Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler." who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I also may pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in its rising, till it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary and his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warmed in a dream not to return to Herod, 
They left for their own country by another road. Now, if you had read the grapevine this week, then you'd know from my letter that the early church celebrated our readings this morning, both the wise men in Matthew and the baptism of our Lord from Luke, quite often at the same time, sometime even adding to the mix the story of the wedding feast at Cana. You see, each of those stories is a proclamation, a proclamation of the presence of Christ, a proclamation of the Messiah being with us in the world. And in each, in each of those events, from baptism to the wedding feast at Cana, back to the wise men, we have a lingering aspect of Christmas. The idea, the example, actually, of gift. A thing given willingly to someone without any expectation at all of payment. The birth of Jesus, the baptism of Jesus, the wedding feast, each of them offering an awareness of God willingly and freely offering His Son to us. We talk about grace, grace, the unearned, undeserved love of God. Well, Jesus is, of course, the literal, physical embodiment of that grace, that gift. That's what we received at Christmas. That's what we acknowledge when we hear the story of Jesus' baptism at the River Jordan. The Holy Spirit descending upon him. We have been given the greatest gift of all. In fact, the gift that calls all other giving out of us in response. It's that which inspired the wise men, that compelled them to find him and offer their gifts not as a payment, but as an offering, an acknowledgement of who he was and what God was doing by sending him in the first place. In Christian art and Christian theology, this moment is called the Adoration of the Magi. You know, we have this beautiful painting back here. Caravaggio's The Inspiration of Matthew. Caravaggio also painted, well, lots of other pieces, but two in particular, the adoration of the shepherds and the adoration of the magi. Adoration. And it may be that in that concept, we can actually embrace something far deeper than all of those exterior symbols that we attach to, to Christmas tide, something far more lasting than decorations, far more lasting than the, than the well-marketed items that we are compelled to buy as gifts. I want us to consider adoration, adoration as something to to participate in as a way of stepping deeper into our faith. You see, adoration calls something out of us and then offers us something in return. It requires us to focus not on the anxieties of the day, and we have them. That's why so many are wearing masks in here. Because of the anxiety. Because of the fear. Because of the uncertainty. Because of the doubt. Adoration, on the other hand, puts us in the place of the Magi. 
kneeling in front of the Christ child and offering what they can. Not just gold and frankincense and myrrh as they proclaim in the story, but also their time. Their willingness to seek answers. To do whatever it took to reach his side. And once there, even if only for a brief time, to rest in his presence, to pause, to simply be aware of and accept the reality of finding what they had been searching for. God, the creator of the universe, present in the face of a child. And then taking that awareness away from the place and letting that truth live in them and shape everything about their lives after that moment. That's Christmas. That's the epiphany. That's the baptism of our Lord. I have a dear friend who is a a Roman Catholic priest. And he talks to me about uh, the saints of the church. One of them, actually the patron saint of priests, St. Jean-Marie Vianney. The patron saint of priests. He was asked one time about the hours that he would spend in solitude, in adoration before the altar. He was asked a simple question. What are you doing with all that time? He said, very simply, I am looking at him, and he is looking at me. Seeing and being seen. Spending time in moments that, if we allow them, never end. Because they change us. They make us into followers. They make us into disciples. And this sends us into the world like the Magi by another road. Like the disciples that will follow Jesus after his baptism in the Jordan. Called to walk in a new way and in a new direction. Amen. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers of the people, form six. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our, for our families, families, friends, and neighbors, and, neighbors, and for, for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Andrew, our bishop, Dorsey, our bishop retired, Daniel, our bishop elect, Rob and Paul, our priests. Pat, our Piedmont Convocation Deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all those in our parish prayer list. And for all who serve in the medical professions and for our first responders. For Peggy. Rebecca, for Dennis, Louisa, hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For the people of St. Matthew's, and for our sister Ethel Torres, who celebrates her birthday this day. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For Betty. For Colin, Ellen, Chuck, Harold, Ruth, Jen. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. you. The prayer for spiritual growth. Gracious, Gracious Father, Father, we ask spiritual growth for ourselves, our, our families and friends, and, friends, and especially for our family, St. Matthews. Grant us growth and understanding and willingness to be your body in this world. Empower us to live the mission of Christ to preach, teach, heal, and make disciples. In joyful thanksgiving for the blessing of your presence in our lives. Compel us to share you with everyone we meet. May our numbers increase, our commitment deepen, our lives be joyfully yours. Make us a God-centered people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Thank you.
May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Good morning. Um, adoration, uh, a concept that I want us to really consider uh, as we move forward. One of the reasons being, uh, as our gallery transforms more into an extension of the worship space, as we begin planning for the pavilion uh, to go over the pad behind the building, we will have an opportunity for some more contemplative worship. Opportunities truly to be silent, to sit, to allow ourselves to rest in the presence of God as a way to deal with not just the anxieties and stresses of the world, but to be inspired and encouraged in the way we respond to the world as we walk from that place. If you're watching us online, welcome. Here in person, welcome. It's good to see so many folks. Uh, a big thank you, of course, to our audiovisual team uh, that makes the, uh, the live stream services possible. Uh, thank you for your hard work, not just today, but for nearly two years now. To our organist choir master, thank you for what you provide for those who read in the services. Uh, frankly, every Sunday could just be about gratitude and it is greatly appreciated, uh, including, of course, the offerings for Christian formation, which we will have uh, not just today, but in the weeks and months to come. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with thanksgiving.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and had their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, 
through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and and ever-living God, God, we we thank you you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. Amen. May God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And now for our hymn for going forth, as with gladness, men and women of old.
Please be seated. Announcements from the congregation. wanted to uh, let everyone know, if you are new, we do offer uh, formation classes for all ages immediately following this service in our education building, which is behind the church. Uh, we have those every Sunday, and you can find more information about those in our grapevine or on our website. Uh, we also, uh, uh, you should have received at some point this morning, and if you didn't, I have a basket with some out in the narthex, a star, a purple card. Uh, with a star on it and a word. So I discovered this practice through the extensive network of formation directors. Um, it's actually an interdenominational practice for Epiphany called Star Gifts. Um, you know, Star Gifts, if you're wondering what they are, if the information on the back isn't quite enough, um, you know, the psalm we read this morning talked about the voice of God. Uh, star gifts are about God's voice. You've all been given a star this morning. If you haven't, like I said, you can grab one in the narthex. Um, and just as the wise men used the Christmas star to guide them to Christ, you now have a star for this year to guide you. The journey, the significance, the word, that's between you and the Lord. So take your star, put it in your Bible, put it in your Book of Common Prayer, put it on your desk or on your fridge, um, and just try to make a practice. If you have not set any intentions for yourself for this year or um, any resolutions, you know, set an intention to check back with your word throughout this year. Uh, hopefully, it will bring you awareness of God's voice and what God is calling you to do or be in 2022. If you don't like your word, good. Don't exchange it. There's a, there's a meaning behind that. So if you do like your word, be worried. <laughs> My word is biscuits. What is that about? <laughs> oh, there we go. Abundance. Just a reminder that appointment scheduling is now open to get your photo of you and or your family into the directory. After five long years, we're working on another photo directory for St. Matthew's. So there are posters around, and there was some information in the grapevine. If you go to the grapevine, you can hit that link and immediately come up with the schedule. It's easy to do. If you have any problems or questions, just let me know. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Scott Garber with the Brotherhood of St. Matthews, the Men's Brotherhood of St. Matthews. I wanted to invite any and all men of the parish, all members uh, past and present, to our upcoming meeting this coming Tuesday evening at 6.30 in the gymnasium. Um, you know, Christ, uh, uh, the Lord has instructed us to help those who are in need, uh, the downtrodden, the needy, the sick, the poor, orphans, the widows. And what we attempt to do um, is not only to just do that, but to help the church and other ministries within the church and those in the community as well. Uh, we, would like, uh, we would like to have all the men of the parish know that all men are invited, not just the eight or 10 or 12 people that show up once a month. This is our first meeting of the new year. We, we, we could use some more participation in our men's brotherhood. So please come out and join us. We'll have, uh, uh, we'll have uh, a bit of a meeting and then we'll have a spiritual lesson and uh, we'll set goals for ourselves for the year and such like that and for raising funds, uh, charitable funds that, uh, that we don't keep, that we hand out to other ministries and such. Thank you very much. Folks, this year, uh, as we did uh, two years ago, uh, we're going to be kicking off, um, well, Lent, ending uh, the season after Epiphany on Fat Tuesday, Shrove Tuesday, with a Low Country Bowl. You know, we've done oyster roasts in the past, but, uh, but this year uh, we're doing a Low Country Bowl. We did this two years ago. Uh, that's not what caused COVID, by the way. Uh, <laughs> 
But we're sure, without a doubt, that the infection rates are going to be down and everything's going to be looking great and we'll all be healthy and it'll all be good and it'll be great and you'll want to celebrate by having shrimp and uh, corn and sausage and just gathering together and having a wonderful time and again, raising money for outreach. Speaking of outreach, as you know, Food Pantry up and running on Wednesdays, Free Medical Clinic up and running on Wednesdays. If you're interested in volunteering your time, show up some Wednesday morning about 9.45. We open up at 10. Trust me, God will have something for you to do. Please stand. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank mm -hmm. you.